Next up, we have a talk by Kuhn. Kuhn uh, just is in the process of finishing his studies at the University of Twente, and he is also a very active maintainer in Riot. And he happened to write a complete uh, USB stack last year, or this year. And now he's going to tell us a little bit about the architecture and what it's all about. Thank you, Hauke. Um, this, the laptop front beef is light. Let's see if this works. Yeah, good. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about USB. I'm going to first explain a bit about how USB works in process. As I assume, most of you are all networking people and not so much USB people. Um, and a bit of what's uh, currently in Riot on the USB side, what we want to have, and then a bit of a dive into how it works. Because I think most of you, or a lot of you, I think, were quite enthusiastic about it and want to know how to use this. So, USB. Um, I'm sure you've seen these ports before, maybe used them. Um, well, I don't think I have to spend a lot of time here. USB is easy to use, it's flexible, it's fast enough for most of things. And the nice things for us, it has standardized functions. And composite devices. So I can build a device which should just work like this presenter. And it could also be something else than a presenter. It could also be like, well, a scanner or a printer or everything at the same time. So, first a bit about USB itself. There is a specification which is almost about everything on USB. Like, they start with, of course, introduction, some terms, bit of background on USB, the architectural overview, which is how it works, what are endpoints, etc., and then a whole lot on mechanical, electrical, which you probably want to leave to an electrical engineer somewhere and just shove it, you know, not your software problem. And then more interesting stuff, protocol layers, and the whole framework on how does this uh, plug and play work and how did it get there? So a small crash course on USB. USB, it's a host-centric protocol, so my laptop here dictates everything on what happens on that USB bus. Um, which ensures that um, peripherals can't really uh, take over the bus. They can't take control of this bus. Which has advantages and disadvantages here. Um, it's all centered around endpoints. There's a number of endpoints on a device and messages and streams are always directed to and from an endpoint. Which is the um, identification of your um, message. Um, so stream and messages and the whole stuff is uh, descriptor based. So there's one huge descriptor explaining everything about this um, presenter and how it should be used, what functions it has, how to talk to it, um, but also its name, its serial number, um, version information. It's all in that big descriptor. So transfer types. Transfer types are tied to those endpoints. Um, and they tell you what kind of data passes through an endpoint. Um, there's four types. We have the, the four different kind of transfers. The interrupt type, uh, which has guaranteed latency. Uh, and in case of an error, there's, there's a possibility for retransmission. Um, Interrupt types are useful for uh, HID devices, keyboards, mouses, where when you press a key, you want to notify the host that there is a key press there. It's also used for uh, other types of interrupt. Think of um, notifications, your, your USB to serial device just connected to, an, um, to a device that talks serial to it. Um, there's the bulk type which does bulk transfers, um, mass storage devices, uh, USB Ethernet devices, all bulk type. There's absolutely zero guarantee on latencies. 
and it's a bit of a best effort. So it gets like all the spare time on the USB bus probably allocated to the bulk endpoint. Um, then the isochronous endpoint. That's a useful one for streaming applications. You can specify the bandwidth you need and you get allocated that amount of bandwidth. Um, downside is there are no retransmissions. There's a bit of error detection, but there's no error correction. And finally, for um, this talk, probably the most interesting one is the setup-based one. Um, it's special in the sense that it's not really a stream, but more uh, it's message-based. There's a request and a response based on the content of the request. And it's used for read and write transfers. For example, the descriptor is transferred over setup messages. So descriptors, as I said before, they provide like the, the full information of your USB device. If you're building an, an USB uh, serial uh, converter, you need a descriptor first that tells something about the device itself. And then those provided functions, like you know, you have a serial uh, adapter, and it should contain all the information necessary for it. So what kind of uh, configuration options are supported? Is it possible to configure the, the, the baud rate of your um, serial converter? Is it possible to configure, um, what's it called, RTS-CTS signaling? Those kind of things are all provided in the device descriptor. And with Linux, you can just request what kind of device descriptor is there on your device. The LSUSB tool, um, you get an output like this. This is my phone. Yeah, it's a Google Nexus 4 phone, and it was uh, I was using the USB uh, network uh, device there. And it says um, we have like a USB version. It's a MISC device. There's some interface association. There's a vendor, product ID. Uh, there's a device version number, manufacturer and product. And this goes on for a while. This just like a short snippet because otherwise I would have like five slides of descriptor here and it's all, well, it goes on for a bit. So that's a bit of basics on USB here. Um, descriptors include a bit more, um, like I said, interface and also endpoints. Um, main thing here is that these interfaces, um, a device, like I said, you have composite devices, your printer scanner device is both a printer and a scanner can have multiple functions, so multiple interfaces. And um, I think the best way to describe an interface is like a collection of endpoints. So um, in case of like an, a mouse, it contains an interface describing that it's a human interface device. There's a single endpoint there that says, um, that essentially transmit the information of which mouse button you've pressed. Uh, for a USB serial converter, it's an interface that says um, this is a bit of um, serial data, and there's two endpoints there, one for the data to the device and one for the data from the device. Any questions on this before continuing here? Good. Then um, what we have so far uh, with Riot on USB, we can write our own USB peripheral drivers and we have a USB framework. And this is mostly a bit of API work to ensure that, well, end developers can write their own USB functionality. If they want to build a custom device, their own USB fan controller, I don't know, they should be able to hook it up here and get something useful out of it. There's support for composite devices. If you want to build a USB device with three serial converters in it, it's possible. And the first bit of functionality uh, merged is a standardized USB uh, CDC ECM spec, which is USB spec talk for um, Ethernet over USB. 
And as for the supported devices, I'm not sure if this list is exhaustive. I think Dylan is better up to date on it than me. Okay, it's good. Good. And as long as you have one of these microcontrollers and a board with it that exposes the USB connection, it should work. And you can use it as a border router with Ethernet over USB or something like that. Now, one of the things that should be merged soon is the serial console functionality. Then you don't need a uh, separate serial connection anymore to your board. You can just use the USB serial uh, mode and use that for your Riot uh, console. Other functions that I would love to have, um, human interface device support, uh, being able to build a Riot-based keyboard or mouse or whatever is in the spec, because it's a really exhaustive spec. Also makes it a bit error prone to implement correctly. Um, device firmware upgrades as an alternative to over the air updates. Um, we'll have a generic Riot bootloader and being able to update your firmware. Mass storage devices, uh, media transfer protocol, getting your files off and on your USB device, and finally, audio, which is, I think, one of the very nice things to have to be able to build like a USB audio device with Riot. And at some part, point, probably USB host mode, because this is all about USB peripherals, and there's also the other way around, being able to hook up your keyboard to your Riot device. <laughs> so, USB on Riot. Um, I've decided to split it into USB dev and USB bus. And this is a bit similar to the whole net dev and GNRC split. USB dev provides an interface to a USB peripheral, like on your microcontroller, and USB bus does the actual USB framework handling. Because this is what you get with a peripheral, and you get a set of endpoint registers, some common registers, and this is all the electrical stuff that we don't have to think about. So we need something to interface this, which is USB dev. And USB is abstract that away, and the only thing you have to do to get something on it is build some functions to fill this struct. So first, let's say in a initialization function, um, we have this struct, we provide it with a driver, and we pass it to the USB bus register it, and it should then call your functions if messages appear. This is a bit of initialization, like here's an interface defined, and you simply add the interface, and the whole use bus framework generates based on that, the whole descriptor structs, everything handles it for you. So this should be, this should probably have some wrapper function, but this should be as easy as possible to use without having to deal with the whole um, descriptors. You can add your own descriptors almost everywhere in the thing, but um, as basics, this should be like it to get interfaces. And you can also request endpoint, add it to your interface, give the type, a direction, and some kind of data size, and you have an endpoint. But we also have those setup messages, which could be uh, directed for your interface. There's the, the, there should be a function above here, but you can simply uh, switch them based on a uh, request number, all numbers, handle it, return a minus one in case if there's an error and you don't support the uh, message, and return uh, one if you support it. And that's it. There's also functions to say I have data I want to return to the host, Transmitting data, simply filling your data, filling a buffer with your data. Uh, buffer is provided by the whole USB dev framework. And you indicate a length and you transmit it and wait for the framework to return you with a transfer complete event. Receiving data is the other way around. You receive the transfer complete, handle your data, request how much data there's available. In this case, the CDC ACM stores the frame. 
and you say, I've read the data, continue. And that's about it for USB. It's not much more difficult than that. If you want to do more, there's also, you know, you can build your own descriptors, everything, you can make it do probably whatever you want to do. There's probably functions missing, but that's the disclaimer. Um, but it should be able to handle that. So, questions? So I guess we limited to one question, as like the smell is already coming in for lunch, <laughs> and we have the one talk to go. So is there one? Hey, thanks, uh, Kunt, for this nice talk. And so uh, traditionally in the uh, Riot community, a lot of people were like fixated or focused on wireless communications and things like that. And uh, how, how do you think uh, things change in terms of uh, focus or uh, evolve with uh, this type of new support? Uh, could you, you know, uh, you, you mentioned a few things uh, that uh, could be possible, but like, uh, do, do you think that there's a new types of devices that could benefit from a lot of things that are IoT? Um, oh, that's a good question. My main goal here was to simplify things, have a simpler way to, not, well, not having to use EPOS for networking, for example, not requiring uh, a USB serial connection separately from the board itself. Um, one of the things uh, that uh, might be useful from uh, an IoT perspective is, um, well, there's in the HID spec, there's an extension to also add sensors. And you can build an, an, an HID sensor device, which I think is also an interesting use case to just have a small pluggable temperature sensor or something. As for really IoT, um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe in the provisioning of the device, it could be useful. Just plug it into your computer, start up your, uh, your application and pair it to the network and have, I hope, a more secure way to pair it, but that's um, just what I can come up with in a minute. Oh, I'm not sure. But, um, no, I haven't thought about it. Okay, thanks again. Really? Nice talk.